Well, good morning, church. What's up, everybody? Make some noise in the house. Yeah. Anybody glad to be in church? Awesome, awesome. Well, I'm so glad that you're here with us this morning. If it is your first time, welcome to Elevate. My name is Brandon Barber. I'm the lead pastor here at the church. Come on, church. Can we welcome our guests just one more time? Come on, lift them up. Good stuff. Glad you guys are here. Are y'all like scared to sit up front or something? I mean, it's not the splash zone or anything, you know? Y'all scared. That's all right. That's me. I'm going to come at you even more. But uh, no, I'm glad you guys are here if it's your first time. We want to welcome everybody here and everybody watching by the airways, our podcast, Harris County Jail. What's up? Hanging out with us, our second campus over there. And uh, we're just so glad. I do have a quick couple of announcements before we dig in today into the word. Is uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask, if you, love your, if you love this church and you love this team, anybody love this church? Yeah? Okay, we need your help. It was like Little Gideon's army last night setting this thing up. Few people showing up. I'm going to ask you to see if you can commit once a month to come on a Saturday night to help us set up. And uh, if we could really, really use the help because we are a set up tear down church and if you're able to hang out afterwards, I mean, we'll give you free donuts and coffee and, coll- I mean, we'll, we'll get more, we'll get chocolate donuts if that'll work. I don't know, all right? But we, will, will you guys just agree and pray about it, will you? And, uh, and we can get you on the mailing list, we'll shoot it out. I know it's at eight o'clock the rest of this month on a Saturday night. We need your help to set up here and set up in the kids. Just once a month is all I'm asking, all right? And then the second thing is this. Uh, Many of you guys know, I already gave a shout out to Harris County Jail. We're one church, two campuses, and we have multiple services going on in the Harris County Jail. Every Thursday night, we got church there where we show our video podcast. And we're needing volunteers that are willing to come and help show the video. And then at the end of service, close it out and pray with people and wrap it up, okay? If you are interested at all, we got a training this Thursday night. Where's Cynthia? Cynthia, raise your hand. You gotta keep it up, all right? Pointing you up. There's Cynthia right there. Connect with her after church, and we'll show you guys how you can get plugged in, both men and women, okay? How we can get plugged in. We need your help. It's real easy. You show up, you press play, and then you pray at the end. It's easy, all right? So we need you guys within that. Well, anybody excited about getting in the Word today? Good stuff. If you are new with us, in your seats are the sermon notes for today, so you can follow along with us. And as you can see, we're in this series called In Between Miracles. Maybe God has worked in your life before, so you know He's real, but you're waiting on Him to work again. You don't know why it's taking so long. You don't know why he hasn't come through already. But you know he's gonna, right? Stuck in this zone. You can uh, turn in your Bibles to Exodus 13 and put a bookmark in Psalms 54. Exodus 13 and Psalms 54. While you're turning there, I'm gonna read the theme verse for today, which is for this series, which is James 1, 2 through 4. If you're stuck in the in-between miracle zone, you're needing God to come through in your life some way, somehow. Verse number two says this, and you can just read it on the screens. James 1, verse 2. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, that doesn't mean if it's going to be tested. That means it, it's going to happen, right? When your faith is tested... Your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. How many know that's a good place right there to be? Amen? Look at Exodus chapter 13 as I set this up, and we're going to pray and we're going to dig in. I just want to pre warn you, I came ready to preach today. So I hope you're ready to bring the energy. If you're new with Elevate, we believe we can go crazy at a football game. How much more should we go crazy about our daddy God? Amen? We serve a God who's alive and not dead. 
Look at Exodus 13, verse 7. Today's message, I'm going to title it simply, But God. When you're waiting on a miracle, sometimes it's a but God moment that needs to take place in your life in order to find breakthrough. Amen? Somebody shout, but God. This is going to set it up. Exodus 13, verse 17. When Pharaoh finally let the people go, God did not lead them along the main road that runs through the Philistine territory, even though that was the shortest route to the promised land, to, you could say, to the miracle. God said, if the people are faced with a battle, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. So God led them in a roundabout way through the wilderness towards the Red Sea. Thus the Israelites left Egypt like an army ready for battle. Verse 19, Moses took the bones of Joseph with him. For Joseph had made the sons of Israel swear to do this. He said, God will certainly come to help you. And when he does, you must take my bones with you from this place. What I want you to get in the text that I just mentioned is, many of you remember God sent Joseph, right? Even though he went through a lot of hell growing up, right? Where he, he was kicked out by his own brothers and left for dead. But God used him to go to Egypt to save God's people. And you remember there were seven years of blessing, right? Followed by seven years of famine. But can you, I don't know if you can see the in-between miracle moment that God's people are in right now. Here they are, they came to a city that God delivered them to to save their lives. A miracle took place, and the very city that saved them, they are now enslaved to. And here they are waiting on a miracle to happen again. Can you see the in-between miracle moment? We know God's going to move, but why hasn't it done it yet? My job to you, my assignment to you today, is it simply says that he led them in a roundabout way because if the people are faced with a battle, they may change their minds. Have it ever, has it ever hit you that could it be the reason you've not seen the miracle in your life is because you are not yet ready to receive it? Could it just be? It's my job today to get you fired up, get you trained up, and get you ready to receive that but, go, that but God moment and miracle that you so desire in your life. Amen? Amen, church. Let, let's pray and open this up. Father God, we worship you. We glorify you. Thank you, God, for your word, for what you're doing. God, I just pray that, that it's your word that speaks. I'm just simply your mouthpiece, God. Holy Spirit, move. Just do what you do, man, and touch people's lives today, God. This is an opportunity for people to find the miracle that they're so looking for. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen, amen. Come on, give it up just one more time. Well, somebody say, but God. But God is the title of my message today, and I want to break it down to you. If, if you go back and you study all the but God moments in the Bible, just take time to look it up and just point out but God and just see how many times it populates in the Bible. If you go and you study it, you'll notice that to the left of but God in Scripture, you'll see that there is, there is disbelief, there is hopelessness, there is darkness, and there is death. But to the immediate right, so I'm going to say, to the right, to the right. I'm going to try to get you all plugged in today, all right? To the right of God, you find hope. You find deliverance, right? You find faith. You find joy. You find, uh, you find security within that. Everywhere that but God is in the Bible, you find salvation or you find deliverance that takes place. So I don't know about you, but I want to figure out about this but God, right? and how it can so help me. There's a man by, that quoted it that I think does it best, James Montgomery Boyce, he says this. May I put it to you quite simply, if you understand those two words, but God, they will save your soul. 
If you recall them daily and you live by them, they will transform your life completely. How many of that's good stuff right there, amen? So, so like I said, to the left of but God, you find hurt. But to the immediate right of but God, you find hope, right? You find grace, you find salvation. And what I want to do to you is kind of, kind of paint the picture if you're not sure what a but God moment is. I want to just quickly go through the Bible and highlight some but God moments that took place and that take place in the Bible. Y'all with me, all right? And every time you, you know that but God is moment, don't be afraid to shout it out. Shout, but God, all right, here we go, all right. So, but it, it all started in the beginning of the Bible. There was many but God moments that took place in the Old Testament and in the, in the New Testament. Many of you guys, you know about a man by the name of Noah, right? Noah was a man who God called to build an ark in the midst of a drought. And he said, what? It hasn't rained in years, and you want me to build a boat and tell everybody that a rain is coming, right? But he did it anyways. And so everybody was laughing at him, uh, calling him a fake, calling him a phony, but he stuck to do what God told him to do. He was faithful in what he called him to do, and how many know, but God sent the rain, right? Then you got a man by the name of Moses who, uh, who helped free God's people out of Egypt. Many miracles took place, but all of a sudden they hit this seawall. And they hit the seawall, and in fact, they quote, we might as well have gone back to Egypt and died because they couldn't go to the right, and they couldn't go to the left, right? And they sure enough couldn't go behind them, because why? Pharaoh's army is on his way to get them. So in the midst of not knowing how to get out, in the midst of not knowing in the need of his Savior, how many know, but God came through and he split the waters? Amen? Then you got a lady by the name of Sarah who was barren from a young age, right? Never, ever supposed to give birth. And then she turns into your grandmama. She's 90-something years old, right? And all of a sudden, a but God moment took place, and she gave her, and God impregnated her with a son by the name of what? Y'all know Isaac, right? Which means laughter. In other words, he told her that I'm going to send you a son that is going to bring you so much joy in your life, it's going to make you forget about all those years of wondering why. Somebody say, but God. Then there was a man by the name of Job. Job was a man who had everything. He had the wealth. He had the family. He had the possessions. He had it all. He was living a blessed life. And all of a sudden, sickness and disease struck him and his entire family, and he lost everybody. And here he is standing alone saying, am I going to remain faithful to the God who gave it all in the beginning and seems to have taken it away? But how many know because of his faithful persistence, a but God moment took place and he gave him more than he ever dreamed. Somebody say, but God. but God. Then there was a group of people by the name of Shadrach, Meshach, and Billy Goat. I mean Abednego, right? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, okay? These guys, they were told that they had to deny their God and bow down to another God. But they decided to stand up for the God that they believed in. They were thrown into a fiery furnace. And how many know a but God moment took place and there was a fourth man up in there. The king could not decide, but because of one moment, it changed the nation. But God takes place. There's, there's, those are some of the stories of but God moments that take place in the Old Testament. But there are some but God moments that take place in the New Testament. Much sickness and disbelief took place in the New Testament. But how many are thankful that but God sent a man by the name of Jesus, right? Who was willing to come and a man who was blind, he threw mud up on his eyes and then he spat in his face. I don't know why he had to spit in his face. I'm sure there's a meaning for that, right? But, but he spat in his face and he was healed. A lady who just went to reach just touched the hem of his garment, right? And she was healed. He also, this is a man who put a little bit of fish and a little bit of bread and held the largest fish fry in history. Amen on that. Fish fry in the house, I'll take it. Right? But these same people that he saved chastised him, beat him, abused him, criticized him, crucified him. They shouted, the king of the Jews is dead. He's dead. He's dead. And he died. And at that first day, they kept on partying, right? How many know that second day, they kept on parlaying, right? But how many know on that third day, right? But God came through and Jesus rose. And when the devil thought he had won forever, he had now lost for eternity. Amen. All because of a but God moment by the name of Jesus. God is good. All the time. 
Well, all right. So there it is. But but God moments obviously produce miracles. I don't know about many of you. Maybe you've had a but God moment take place in your life. Maybe you're searching for one right now. I can tell you, when I started thinking about one of the most, uh, my most memorable but God moments was the time when I was in college. And I was, I was, uh, I walked into the cafeteria and I got my, my, my uh, teammate, my roommate, he's now my brother-in-law. And I said, I walked in the cafeteria and I was like, ooh, who is she? And it was my wife, Kristen, okay? And uh, just go ahead and clarify that, okay? But I looked and I said, dude, hey, will, will you go, will you go, hey, you see, he was ahead of me in line. I said, hey, bro, you see her? Go, go sit down next to her. And then when I get my tray, I'll come sit by you. And so I was so excited. And so he said, all right. So I went to go get my tray and I turned around and he's sitting by the wrong girl. I was so mad. I was like, dude, you're killing me, bro. But anyways, I, I went over to her. And I was just, took a chance and was like, hi, my name is Brandon, what's yours? And she straight up went, Kristen, and walked away. Just straight up shot me down. But how many know, but God, right? Hey, baby, persistence in Jesus' name. Hey. I had to use my sister. She went and got her to the house. <laughs> and then we, we worked the magic from there. So, but I love her. But that's my greatest but God moment I can think of. When I didn't deserve it, God came through. So thankful for it. But maybe, maybe you're stuck in the in-between miracle zone today. You're needing God to move in your marriage. You're needing God to move in your body. You need a physical healing. You're needing God to move to get a job. You're needing God to move in your finances. You got depression hitting you. Uh, it, it can be a variety of different things. Addiction is hitting you. And you need a miracle to take place. If in order for me to get you to understand the concept of a but God moment, in order to train you, I've got to change your faith vocabulary just a little bit. I've got to get you to realize some things, and then I've got to get you to act on it about but God. Somebody say, but God. Got four quick points I want to break down to you about how you can experience a but God moment. Number one is this, and I think it's in your notes. It's already done. Somebody shout, it's already done. When you're experiencing a but God moment, the greatest thing that you can realize is that it's already done. In Scripture, it says, it says as we just read, right, that God freed his people out of Egypt. Pharaoh said that they can go. And many people, though, think that the miracle, the but God moment, was the Red Sea. But that's not true. The Red Sea was simply the manifestation of the miracle from the but God moment that happened before Pharaoh had his last change of heart. The Bible says that he didn't lead them on the short route, right? He didn't send them down I 10. But what he did is he sent them in a roundabout way through the wilderness. The reason why is because it's because they were not yet ready for battle. Could it just be that they were not yet ready for the miracle that so awaits them? Many people realize, here you are, you think in the but God moment is the miracle, but it's actually the action before the miracle. It's the but God moment that happens that produces the miracle. Amen? So before the but God moment was, hey, God sending them in a roundabout instead of the straight and narrow path. Sometimes God doesn't move quick enough for us. Sometimes he doesn't move as quick as we want him to. But there is a purpose about going through a roundabout season in our life. I don't know if many of you know, y'all know what a roundabout is? Anybody? They're kind of bringing it to Houston. But a roundabout, there is no stoplights. You just allow people to go, stop and go when they want to. Now, when you first hear about that, you think it's crazy because y'all know there's some crazy drivers out there, right? That's why I'm going to get some Elevate bumper stickers so I can point y'all out, man. Just be like, be crazy, go to church, yeah. But there's some crazy people out there. But I thought it was pretty amazing when I studied a roundabout. Did you guys know that a roundabout, here's the, here's the definition for it. It's an uncontrolled intersection that is designed to calm traffic. And it will slow you down. But here's the amazing thing. It reduces injuries by 90% because of a roundabout. Could it just be the fact, the reason why you have not found your miracle yet? 
Could it just be that the reason why God didn't send you down the shortest route is because it was leading you to death when he's trying to lead you to life? Because you may not be ready for the miracle because when you hit it, you can't fully receive it and you can't sustain it. God wants you, when he gives it to you, he wants you to sustain it. Maybe when you get there, it's leading to death. But how many are thankful that God, even though he may send us through a wilderness experience, a roundabout that we didn't really see or understand why he's doing it, could be the very thing that we need the most. Amen? But he says that they did not go because they were not yet ready for battle. What that tells me, if they were not yet ready for battle, then they didn't do the things necessary to prepare. He didn't do the things necessary to prepare. God understands preparation. He doesn't expect anybody to just jump in and hit the ground running with their purpose. God maybe hasn't moved quick enough, but stay faithful to him, and he will stay faithful to you. It's all about preparation. Maybe read a little bit more. Worship a little bit louder. Cry out a little bit longer. Maybe it's all about preparation. But here's the thing that the reason why God had to send them around the roundabout way is because until they got to the Red Sea, they had not been in position to where only he can move. You see, while they were in Egypt, they, even God moved in multiple ways, right? He, he made many, many miracles that took place there. But they still had a home. They still had a place to eat. So if it didn't work out, they all right. But here they are at the Red Sea, and they got no hope. They got nowhere to go, and until they were put in a position where only he can move, were they not ready, to, uh, were they not ready for the promised land and the miracle? Here's my question to you. When's the last time you put yourself in a situation to where only he can move? Or put your situation in his hands to where only he can move? Because if you do it, then you get the glory. But if he does it, then what? He gets the glory, amen? That's what it's all about. Put yourself in a situation that allows him to move. Then you'll see the miracle. Somebody say it's already done. done. There's power in having faith to know that the miracle is on its way. I'm going to wrap this point up with the illustration of a story. Many of you guys knew. Many of you guys remember, y'all remember Keith Wheeler? He came a few weeks ago, carries the cross all around the world, right? He came to join us for Elevate. This man, if, you, if you're new with this, Keith Wheeler, he carries the cross all around the world. He's walked over 200,000 miles, oh, I'm sorry, 20,000 miles, 20,000 miles in almost into 250 countries. He just shows up and he just starts walking expecting God to provide for his needs. Pretty cool, right? He, tears, he tells this, this true story. He's walking in the desert of Africa down a road, and he's going, and the closest, the closest town is, is about 25 miles ahead. Man, there ain't nothing behind him for hours. And he's just walking, and you can imagine being in Africa, right? Where, where you dry, you pro- your skin's probably got a real bad leak in it, right? You sweating like crazy, okay? And, and, he's, and he just, he's walking, and all of a sudden he just casually thinks in his head, man, a Fanta orange sure sounds good right now. I mean, you say, that sounds good right now to you, right? Fanta orange sure sounds good. And he just keeps walking. He just started in his head quickly. He keeps walking, and five minutes later, there's this four-door, tinted-out car that rolls up right beside him. And this lady rolls a window down in the back, and she looks at him, and she goes, Sir, are you thirsty? Now, if it were me... And I've been walking for miles. This is how I act. Yes, ma'am. And I'm jumping in the car, you know, going to get that thing. But y'all saw Keith, right? He's like very humble. So you could see him responding this way. Well, well yes, ma'am. I, I would love a drink of water. I, I would love something to drink. And she says, okay. So she, she gets out of the car. She gets out of the car and goes around to the back and pops open the trunk. And believe it or not, right in the trunk was a six-pack of Fanta Orange. And he was like, what? Ma'am, you have no idea. I just thought in my head five minutes ago that a Fanta Orange sure would sound good. And the lady just starts going crazy. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Ah, thank you, Jesus. 
I knew it was you, Jesus. I knew it was you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Y'all can't get over that kick, can you? I'm trying to get all spiritual. All right. It's like, thank you, Jesus. I knew it was you. I knew it was you, God. This lady is just going crazy. And Keith was just kind of bewildered. He said, ma'am, help me understand. I, I don't know what you mean. And she said, sir, God spoke to me that there was going to be somebody walking down the road that needed something to drink. And I just drove three hours to come and meet you with this drink. I don't know if you caught it yet or not. But he thought it five minutes ago. And she just drove three hours to come and meet him for his need. I don't know if you realize it's already done, but two hours and 55 minutes before he even thought it in his head, God knew exactly what he wanted at the very time that he needed and in the very season that it needed to take place. Come on, somebody. I don't know who needs to hear it today, but God knows your need. He knows your miracle. And I'm telling you, it may not feel in time, but it is always on time. And he will produce it to you, and he will bring it to you when you need it at the very time that you need it to happen. Somebody say, but God. And shout, it's already done. It's on its way. Your miracle is on its way. Your job. It's on its way. It's coming. In Jesus' name. Number two point is this. How to receive a but God moment. It's I fit the mold. I fit the mold. And it says it best. I will read it to you. You can turn there if you like or just look at the screens. Romans 5, verse 6 through 11. I find that the hardest thing for people to accept is the simple fact that you've screwed up so much you don't think you fit the miracle. But I'm here to prove to you today in the Bible that you do fit the miracle. Amen? It doesn't matter how many, it doesn't matter you've whether gone from the outhouse to the penthouse and back to the outhouse, how many times you messed up, your family may not believe in you. They're like, what's different now? It's okay how many times you've messed up. It doesn't matter how many times you've been in and out of jail or in and out of prison and how many times we're, many of us, behind those invisible bars, amen? It doesn't matter how many times you've messed up. You still fit the mold. You fit the miracle. There ain't no difference between me and you. We all fit. I'm going to prove it to you right here that you, you do fit for the miracle that God wants to bring you. Romans 5, starting with verse 6. When we were utterly helpless... Christ came at just the right time. Amen on that, right? And he died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. And there it is. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us, right, while we were still sinners. In other words, while you were a sinner, he still died for you no matter your background. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Jesus Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation, for since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son, while we were still his enemies, we will certainly, everybody shout, certainly, be saved through the life of his son. So now we can rejoice. In our wonderful new relationship with God. Because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends of God. Amen? Amen. How many are thankful that it doesn't matter where you've gone or where you came from, God wants to love you to where you're going. Amen? Amen? And he loved a wretch like me and a sinner like me. You fit the mold. It doesn't matter how many times we've messed up. It doesn't matter how many times you've not come to church. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't mean you got to make up for all those years that you've been wrong. No, God doesn't look at age. He just simply looked for potential. And if you're willing to say yes to him, he will say yes to you, and he'll give you the miracle that is so waiting on your behalf. You fit the mold. And the third thing is this. And I think a lot of us ask this question. But God, why? Am I right? Anybody ask that question? God, why is this happening to me right now? You, I, am I the only one? Or are y'all all lies and I need to call that out? We all do. I'm just, God, why is this happening to me? 
Why, man? And, and, and here's the deal. It's okay to cry out. It's okay to go, God, why? Everybody just try and go, ah! Feels good, right? Feels good, real good. God, why is this happening to me? And I want to show you. In Psalms 54, we're going to read real quickly about David, who's stuck in the in-between miracle season in his life. Here he is. God delivered him from a broken home, a father who didn't consider him worthy, brothers who didn't accept him. God delivered him from the outhouse and put him in the penthouse with the king. He delivered him with a miracle, and the same place that God brought him to with the miracle has now turned against him, and he's back running the streets asking God, why is this happening to me? I know you've made a promise that I'm your king. Why am I out of the palace? Can you see the in-between miracle zone? And we're going to read. You're going to see, starting in verse 1, you're going to see where David cried out to God. But then you're going to see there was a but God moment that took place, and the cry transitioned into a praise. The cry transitioned into a praise. It says this in verse 1, Psalm 54, verse 1. Come with great power, O God, and rescue me. Defend me with your might. Listen to my prayer, oh God. Man, pay attention to me. Y'all see that? That's the way I read it. Man, are you even up there, God? Pay attention to what I'm saying. Anybody been there, done that? That was this past week for me. God, God, are you even up there? Violent people are trying to kill me. They care nothing for you, God. Verse 4, there it is, right? Everybody say it. But God is, I got to do better than that. Everybody ready? But God is my helper. Here's the from a cry to a praise, right? The Lord keeps me alive. May the evil plans of my enemies be turned against them. Do as I promised and put an end to them. I will sacrifice a voluntary offering, not because I have to, not because I need to, but just because I want to, right? I will sacrifice that to you. I will praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. For you have rescued me from my troubles and helped me triumph over my enemies. Amen? Amen. So I don't know if you see it right there, but there is a cry that transitions into a praise. And if you really want a but God moment in your life, the cry must transition to a praise. But you got to understand, it's okay to cry out. It's okay to cry out. Many of us, we don't realize we're taught by tradition, we're taught by denomination, that, you, that whenever something comes against you, just get quiet and just receive it must be God's will. This cancer that's hitting your body, you, you, you might as well just go ahead and accept it. It's, it's, it's God's will. You just get ready. And, and or maybe, maybe uh, your job has hit you, or maybe stress has hit you, or depression, or addiction, and you're just like, you don't know what to do, right? And you're taught just to be quiet. But that ain't true. The Bible that I read says you can cry it out to God. He gives you a season to cry, followed by a season to laugh. And I don't know about you, but when something comes my way, I'm like, God, why? Anybody else with me now? Can you be real with me today, right? God, why is this happening to me? Have you ever had that kind of cry, laugh? Man, you know he's going to come through, but you just don't know how. God, why? <laughs> God, that's, yeah, I know it's going to be great, God. I know it's going to be Jesus. I don't know, but God, but why? Is this happening out? Let me encourage you. Crying out may be the very thing that's holding you back from the miracle that you so desire. The fact of just admitting that you're going through a problem is the very thing that may bring you out and into the miracle that you need. When a baby is born, what's the first thing they do? They cry it out. Why? Because their lungs are like a deflated balloon, and it's that cry that puts life into their lungs that allows them to live. For some of you, it might just be a cry that's going to bring life into the situation that you need. Somebody say, cry it out. It's okay to cry out. But as long as it transitions into a praise. 
You won't find your miracle until it transitions into a praise. Now, real quickly, I'm going to do an illustration for you. And then we're going to close this service out and have a little bit of fun. I'm going to challenge you all to act it out on that praise. But here's the deal. I don't know if any of you guys know. Y'all still with me? I don't know if any of you guys know, but there's different styles of raising hands in church. Did y'all know that? Huh? When you come to church, there's different styles of how you raise your hand. Now, some of you, maybe you grew up in a hand-raising church. Maybe some of you did not. But if those of you that did grow up in a hand-raising church, you maybe have seen these few styles of raising your hand. Can y'all have fun with me a little bit this morning, all right? So maybe you're a new believer and you're just coming into church and you don't necessarily know how to engage in worship, right? I like to call those people the elbow flappers. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about? You've seen those guys? Man, they might even get the little kick in every now and then. Oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> Ooh, thank you, Jesus. And then they start feeling it and they get a little bit, you know, stronger. Their face starts building and they go straight from this to holding the TV. Woo, go widescreen, regular, four by three. Thank you, Jesus. We can go iPad. I don't know, right there. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. And you go straight from that, things get a little bit louder, and you, you, want, you want to get a little bit crazier, right? And you go, my fish is this big. That one's for our sound man, Anthony. Fish is this big. In fact, the fish you catch are probably this big. But I'm just saying. So my fish is this big. And then it goes from that, you get a little bit louder, and it goes from T-Rex. Oh, thank you. Y'all seen that, right? Yeah, just, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. And then the things get a little bit more crazy, right? And you go straight from this to holding baby Jesus. <laughs> holding baby Jesus. Amen? Amen. Why don't you give me just a little music back there? Just soft. Holding baby Jesus. Make it feel more anointed. <laughs> I'm talking about Jesus back here, Anthony. Here we go, right, holding baby Jesus, and then you go straight from that to twisting the light bulbs. Oh! Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. And then you can go straight from this, touchdown, right? Not for the Cowboys, but for the Texans, in Jesus' name. Yep. Here we go, touchdown, right? And then maybe you've seen the wipe the wipers. Oh! Windshield wipers. Might even throw in an ugly face. And now the last one is simply this. The last one is, is three in one, really. And you see this the most in church. And when you recognize it, you better get shouting. It's called this. It's the pointer, hatchet, palm. Pointer, hatchet, palm. Push it! Yeah, somebody! Make some noise. Different styles of raising your hands in church. Can y'all have a good time in church? It's all about how you get your praise on. Worship and praise is what activates the miracle. When you go from a cry to a praise, you have now put yourself in position from going, but God, why, to oh, but God did. But God, why is this happening to you? Oh man, I can see you working here, God. I can see it happening. It's got to go from a cry to a praise because worship is the breathing ground for miracles. And if you need a miracle to take place in your life, you must learn how to praise him through the storm. God, I thank you anyways. Father, I worship you no matter what. All hell is breaking loose in my life, but I thank you anyway. Sometimes praise is all you need. And sometimes, now I might, y'all just gonna understand this is Elevate, all right? And I wanna express a point even more to you and have a little bit of fun and we're gonna close this service out, amen? But how many know that sometimes when you need God to move, what you need is a little bit of old school praise? Anybody grow up in church with a little bit of old school praise in the house, yeah? Y'all know what I'm talking about? A little bit of dancing, a little bit of jumping, a little bit of shouting. Because there's something about it that just creates it and makes it happen. Audio man, if you can't crank that up. And Anthony, Anthony's going to take us to church for a minute. Let me hear it. Come on.
Come on, lift it up, lift it up. How many know when the devil's trying to hit your body, right? When the devil says all hell is coming against you, sometimes the greatest thing to do is get your praise on and shout, but God, come on. All right, church, now you got to stand with us. If you're new to Elevate, we don't do this every Sunday, but we like to have a little bit of fun. How many would agree that if disease hits your body, that you don't have to accept it? You just simply got to get your praise on. Somebody shout. All right, now ele elevate. Listen to me. You got one more chance to get your praise on. I don't know what you came in here with today. Addiction, depression, disease, looking for a relationship, looking for joy, looking for freedom. <clears throat> I don't know what you came in here today, what you're crying out to God from, but if you get your praise on, You'll find your miracle one more time. Somebody shout, my God. Come on, give it up, baby. Yeah, buddy. Come on, guys. Give God some praise in the house, yeah? Yeah. Come on. Give it up for the team, will you? Give it up for our worship team, our band. Yeah. Now, can we get serious and close this out? I know that it was crazy. And I know it was fun, but I'll say it again. Church is where you're supposed to have more fun than anywhere in the world. Am I right? It's the one place you should look forward to every week. Now, listen to me, though. That was fun, crazy, and planned to put a lot of laughs and joy in your life because I do have a purpose behind this. When you danced... And when you praised, how did you feel? You felt free. I wanted to illustrate to you the power of going from a cry to a praise. Because it's in the praise that you find your freedom. I was reading on, I saw a tweet yesterday. Many of you may not know, Rick Warren, he wrote The Purpose Driven Life. Other than the Bible, the, the largest sold book in the world. He just lost his son to suicide two days ago, three days ago. He tweeted, he said, preaching is doing nothing for me. The only thing getting me through this is worship. There is something about praise. There is something about worship that causes you to have the faith to know that the impossible that is coming against you is nothing or not near as powerful as what's in you. And that's the God that can make all things possible that lives on the inside of you. But you gotta learn to get your praise on. When things are coming against you, you know what I do? I grab my headphones, I crank it up, and I worship until I find freedom. And I wanna challenge you today, I said this earlier. I said, when you read in the Bible, to the left of but God. You find nothing but, I think we got it on the screens for you. To the left of but God, you find fear. You find hurting. You find abuse. You find failure. And you find nothing. 
But here's the deal. You can't go from left, come here, Jay. You can't go from left to right without going through. You see, you used to have to go in a roundabout way through the wilderness to get the miracle. But since Jesus came to die for you and for me, a roundabout does not need to be your life. He simply says, if you want to go from left to right, if you want to go from hurting to freedom, it is literally from my left, through me, you will find the miracle that you so desire. So maybe you came in here tonight, and my prayer partners line up right here. We're going to have a time of prayer and a quick worship. And I'm challenging you to, this is your opportunity. I set it up, now it's your time to engage. Maybe you came in here with fear today. Fear of just stepping out and doing what God's told you to do. Maybe fear of saying yes to the job that you know you need to do. Maybe it's a little bit less money, but it's more time with the family. I, I don't know what you came in here today. Maybe your, your fear, but if you walked in here with fear, through Jesus you can find, in three seconds, faith. You came in here with fear, you can find faith if you leave here today. Maybe you came in here hurting. I don't know what you're hurting with. You just want to give up life. But through Jesus, you can leave here today with a little bit of hope. If you came in here abused, maybe you feel like you've been, maybe you were physically abused. Maybe you were raped. I know I'm getting real, real quick. Maybe you were verbally abused. I don't know what it is you came in here with today. Maybe that's the anger that you're holding towards somebody. Let me tell you, love the person, not the situation. You will find the love of God until so you're willing to forgive and let it go. If you came in here feeling abused, through Jesus you can find love. Maybe you came in here feeling like a failure. Failure as a father, failure as a son, failure as a daughter, failure as a spouse. I know I've failed multiple times. I'm telling you, through Jesus, through Jesus, I can find grace. How many are thankful for the grace of God? Amen? Amen. And then lastly, maybe you came in here feeling nothing. Maybe you've never accepted this man named Jesus. Or maybe you tried it and you went right back to what you were doing and you feel nothing on the inside. Maybe you need to rededicate your life. Maybe you're battling with different religions. I'm here to tell you, my God was raised from the dead. Yours wasn't, just saying. But here's the deal. Maybe you came in here feeling nothing. You feel emptiness on the inside. But through Jesus, today, you can find everything that you need. Can I just pray for you real quick? And that this is what we're going to do. We only got a few minutes left in church today. We're going to sing a song, and I'm asking you, if you need prayer in any one of those areas, if you're stuck in the in-between miracle zone, you just need somebody to agree with you and pray, this altar is for you. Take advantage of it. Get out of your seats. Come down. Let us pray with you. But if you stay in your seats, do me a favor. Don't leave yet. We'll dismiss very shortly. Let's engage in the worship. Let's lift our hands like we never have before. Get your praise on and find freedom today. Amen. Father, we worship you. We glorify you. Father, I thank you for every person here today. You guys can start coming forward if you want. If they need to find Jesus, they find you. If they need to find freedom, they find you. If they need to find healing, they find you, God. Their but God moment is on its way, Father. We declare it. We receive it. And we praise you in advance in Jesus' name. Let's lift our hands and let's pray and let's worship for a little bit. Sing no weapon formed against me shall prosper. No, no, no. Say it won't work. And no weapon formed against me 
shall prosper. No, no, yeah. Say it one way, cause my God will do what He said. He will do, He will stand by His word, yeah. He will come through, say no weapon formed against me shall prosper, no. Say it ain't gonna work, say no weapon no formed against me. Shall prosper, no, no. Say it won't work, cause my God will do what He said. He will do, He will stand by His word. Yeah, He will come through. No, I won't be afraid. No, I won't be afraid of the air. Oh, from the hands of the enemy, cause I, my God will do what He said. He will do, He will stand by His word. Yeah, He will come through, sing no weapon formed against me. Shall prosper, yeah, yeah. say it won't work. Oh, say it's a new day. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. God is so good to us, amen. Somebody say, God is good to me. I love that the Lord shows up. He says that every time two or more gather in his name, he's with us. How many this morning can say, God is with us in this place? Amen. God is with us. I want to encourage you to stay in this attitude of worship. I want to remind you about a couple things and we'll be dismissed. But we're going to stay in this attitude of worship. Jay's going to continue to sing. But let me remind you about a couple things real quick. I know Pastor mentioned this earlier. We got set up for the remainder of the month at 8 p.m. And we're asking as many of you as possible to join us on Saturday nights at 8 p.m. for setup. It takes about an hour and a half. That's all we're asking, even if you can commit to just one time a week. Help us on Saturday nights. Then next level classes. How many of you have been going through next level classes? Are there any in here that have been going through? Immediately after service, About give it about 10 minutes. Over in the education building, we'll have next level classes beginning again. And, um, and then I'll remind you, our giving kiosk is back there where you, can also, uh, where you can take care of tithes and offering, but you can also put your green card, your green connect card. You can put it in one of those offering baskets uh, at the end of service. Go ahead and you lift your hands one more time. And let's just thank the Lord for what he's done this morning. Father, you're so good to us. We honor your presence, Father. It's so good to know that we serve a God who is alive and not dead. It's so good to know that we serve a God that shows up. We, it's so good to know that we serve a God who is the answer to everything that we need. Father, this morning we just surrender our time to you. We surrender, resurrender our lives to you. And Father, I'd ask a blessing over your people as we leave today, Father, that your presence is with us, is always with us. Father, we commit our lives and every moment to you in the name of Jesus. And if you believe that you said, Amen, 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 amen. We love you, Elevate Church. You guys are dismissed, and we'll see you guys next Sunday.